Hi guys, my name is Tom Antos. Today I wanted to show you a little preview of this cool new project I'm working on. Uh, and then afterwards uh, I'll show you guys uh, how I did it. Um, here it is. Gentlemen, he struck again. All right, so what you guys just seen is the opening of my new video, which is uh, like this mock movie trailer. It's gonna have a little bit of everything. And I'm first gonna start off with this shot right here. I'll show you guys how I set it up. So you can't just show up, you know, on your location with the camera and the actors and, and think that things are just gonna automatically look good. You have to plan for everything sort of ahead of time. Uh, and the best way to do that is by doing storyboards. I usually like to storyboard all of my shots, this way I'm not wasting the uh, the actor's time uh, on the day of the actual filming. Um, I just basically show up and I already know what kind of shots I need to get and, and how many of them. Uh, so when setting up my shots, the first thing I start off with is the placement of the actual camera. So uh, here you can see I was uh, trying out the, the angle uh, and, and it turned out that I was a little bit too close to the wall there. So I moved back, um, I, I switched my lens, in this case uh, I used a 15mm lens. Uh, the camera I'm using, by the way, is a Canon 7D, but really these days most like SLR cameras and, and even some small compact cameras are, are good enough that they all shoot great HD video. So so really it's not the camera that's going to make a you know difference in how your shots look, but uh, but uh, it's it's how you design the shots. It's sort of the same thing that I talked about in, in, in one of my tutorials that I did uh, on YouTube a while back. Uh, in, in which I was talking about uh, how to set up you know, and, and design your shot when filming, for example, just something simple outside with no lights. Uh, you can check out this video by clicking the link up here or by clicking the link in the description. A anyways, getting back to this shot. Uh, so once I've picked up my angle that kind of matches the, the, what I storyboarded, um, you know, I just kind of test, test it out up here, I, I see how it looks. And if you know uh, if I like what I see, then the next step is to set up the lights because, as you notice right now, it looks very just just very boring. Uh, the the lighting that that's, that was there actually at the location was was not really interesting. The first light is this uh, redhead, uh, which is a 1,000 watt tungsten light that I put uh, at the end of the hallway there behind the, behind the door, and I put a blue gel over it. Now uh, I'm using a redhead light, a, a kit of like two of these lights that I bought for around 800 dollars. Uh, which can seem expensive, but at the same time, it doesn't. You know, you don't really need to buy an expensive light like that. You, you can you just as well use a regular hardware light. And, and really, the difference between a professional, you know, movie light and a regular hardware light are, are just those little things that, that make working with them more comfortable. For example, the, the the this movie light has, you know, nice barn doors which you can adjust, and you can really control the amount of light that spills. Whereas with a hard, hardware light, you can't really do that, but but you you can do something similar by just putting some tin foil around it. Or in this case, I'm using black tin foil, which you can get at any uh, you know film supply store, you know, or order it online. Um, another thing is, uh, for example, the, the the professional movie lights, they come you know with nice stands that are easy to mount. Uh, hardware lights are usually hard to mount on standard you know um, movie stands. Um, they're kind of wobbly and stuff like that, but they still work. You can still do the same stuff, and it's just gonna you know maybe take you a little bit of extra time uh, since they're not as easy to work with, but you'll get the same effect. Uh, anyway, so that's the light that I used there at the end of the hallway. Uh, and then uh, another light that I used in this shot is uh, a softbox, um, and I have two softboxes. One is this big uh, softbox, uh, and then another one is this uh, medium size. And um, both of them are just regular hardware lights. Um, they're about thousand watts. Uh, and then all I simply did is I bought the softbox, which is like this. It has this me metal mount, and then it has this big uh, cloth, uh, you know, which kind of diffuses the light. Um, and uh, and then to mount it to my hardware light, I just used a, a little wire that I kind of wrapped around the light and then um, just hold it in place. Uh, the reason why I used this blue light uh, the, it was to kind of add a little bit of a contrast and, and some color to the, this hall hallway because uh, all you really see there without any lights is just these plain white walls and it just kind of looks boring. And with the blue light right away, you can see it just adds some, you know, some nice blue color to it, and also that that shine on the wall just kind of uh, makes the shot look a, a little bit more interesting. Now, another thing I noticed while filming was that uh, just this big wall up here that we see at the beginning of the shot looked 
really boring and on top of that there was like a little hole here on the bottom and some some wires sticking out so basically to to cover that up and to make the shot more interesting i added a little flower pot in the foreground um, and then the final thing you know i just did some basic color correction and here's how the shot looks and as you'll notice right away it's, it's more interesting than uh, than what we started with okay now let's move on to the next shot uh, again i start off with the storyboard um, then you know once i kind of pick my camera angle that matches the storyboard uh, I set up the lights and the lighting you know since it has to match the first shot is pretty much identical uh, again I have the blue light but now I kind of shine it uh, on her hair since we're not really seeing too much of the wall and, and then I'm, I move that softbox a bit closer uh, just so that you know it lights up uh, the, the actress face uh, a little bit better now sometimes you guys won't be able to do storyboards uh, simply because you will not know let's say what the location looks like uh, which was the case uh, in here where all I had was the, the script uh, and based on the description I knew that all I really had to show was an alien and then in the background a person lying down in their underwear you know getting ready uh, to be probed so on the day of the actual filming uh, what I would do is I would just take my camera and that's where digital SLRs are really great because they're so small and light that you can easily walk around with them and and I would just you know tr test out different angles so you can see here one angle uh, which I didn't quite like because when the alien turns he kind of covers the, the person's head there uh, the, Another angle It looks better, but also he covers uh, too much of him And then when I just moved the alien to the left side here It was better because throughout the whole time you could see uh, the, the the face you know, and the reactions of the other actor So the first thing I do is I, I co just cover up the walls and the furniture with some black material uh, And I just use some tape and just tape it to the walls uh, then we found these uh, weird little decorations uh, just lying around, so we decided to tape them to the chandelier and uh, just you know make it look like some weird alien environment. Um, then this is how the shot looks, you know, with uh, with the walls covered. Uh, and as you can see, I didn't have enough black material, but I had some other like blankets and stuff that I put up there just to cover it up. And for the alien, all, all I simply did was uh, you know I bought a rubber mask for at a Halloween you know costume store cost around 20 bucks I think um, and uh, and I just put it on one of the actors uh, and right there you can see it already looks you know starting to look at least uh, sort of like some alien spaceship and now the next thing is uh, the, the lighting so when I turn off uh, all the lights in that location uh, then it looks like this <laughs> you obviously can't see anything and then I have one light just a simple light uh, which in this case was one of my uh, redheads but uh, again, you can use a regular hardware light. I just put a green gel over it, and I just kind of shine it up here at this, the alien. Then the next light is on the the guy in the background there, which is again the same light, but I put um, a yellow gel on it just to kind of make it look different. Uh, and then the last light uh, was sort of lighting the alien here from behind, which was just a straightforward uh, hardware light, and it has this kind of a it's a fluorescent light, so it has a blue blue tint to it and it just kind of adds an you know some more interesting details kind of to the other side of the, the alien's face um, and then the the last thing I do is, uh, is add some color correction and as you can see uh, when you compare it to what we started off in the beginning uh, it you know it looks drastically different uh, and again it's all it took was a few simple steps uh, but you know they all make a difference uh, and then you know uh, and the final thing of course we add some sound effects and uh, and some music and uh, looks something like this. It's got aliens. And zombies. I hope you enjoyed this week's tutorial. Uh, next week I'll show you some more tips on how to make your shots look more cinematic by adding camera movement. Uh, specifically I'll show you how I built my camera dolly and how you can build yours uh, for almost nothing. Also I'm going to show you uh, some tips on how to add Really interesting camera movements to your shots, even if you don't have a dolly or a steadicam. Uh, also on my website, I have a bunch of exclusive tutorials, uh, such as the Dinner Date Short Film School, uh, which kind of documents and, and sort of shows you in detail how I made that short film. Uh, or, for example, my Music Video Film School, where I show you three different music videos that I made. Uh, you know, everything from the planning process all the way to the, the post-production. And I also have a cool new product called the Lighting Dozen, where I just show you the cinematography techniques. So I show you how I set up the camera, camera settings, what lenses, cameras I use, how I set up the lights, uh, and then also uh, what I do in post-production with regards to, uh, for example, the color correction of it. 
and some any little you know post production techniques that I apply to it. So if you guys are interested, then please check out the the store on my website. Uh, thank you guys, and uh, I'll see you next time.